The iPhone X is about four and a half years old, and over here in mid 2022, should you still hold on if you have one, or should you upgrade, or if you're planning to buy one, is it really a good deal for about $200 nowadays? Today we'll find out. In 2022, the build of the iPhone X doesn't really stand out. The front has rather thick bezels with a big notch compared to the smaller ones on the iPhone 13 and the hole punches on Galaxy and other devices. But when it comes to the back, the iPhone X kills it for me. I love the iPhone X as well as the XS and XS Max design so much that I'll put it the top two favorite iPhone designs of all time. As you can see, the frame of my iPhone X is still shiny, but when buying secondhand, make sure it is not scuffed or scratched so you will also get the shine. While the display is sort of outdated with a very mediocre screen to body ratio, the display panel itself falls under the nice category of OLED slash AMOLED. The OLED and AMOLED gives a high contrast level. The brightness of this screen even at max under direct sunlight is horrendous. But will 200 bucks get you a better display than this? Absolutely not. So the display is not an issue overall. This is by far my favorite camera design of all time for iPhones. And over here you got 12 megapixel main and telephoto lens. The main camera, it's okay. It's not really gonna blow your mind. It is almost on par with most mid-range 2022 phones. But it comes to a telephoto lens and honestly this is not really a good telephoto lens but having it at a price bracket that you can get in 2022 this might be a deal for most people although it's only two times admittedly overall the camera there's many parts that are lacking especially in dynamic range the video however it's a lot better in my opinion it holds up a lot better than most 2022 mid-range phones around the price Front camera lacks in dynamic range as you can see over here, the sky is very blurred out. Back cameras of this phone is great, but the front camera is not really meant for taking good videos in 2022. Software support is great, I expect this to get up to iOS 17 to be honest. So this is on iOS 15 and you can upgrade to 16 like right now if I'm correct at the time of shooting. But yeah, iOS is a smooth and fluid experience and it is a good software in my opinion. Remember, this phone is closing in about close to 5 years soon and getting software update is till this much is almost unheard of in other manufacturers. And actually this is pretty much Apple's selling point. A phone can last for 5 to 6 years with software update compared to Samsung's 4 years or other brands 2 to 3 years on flagships. While the software is typically supported 5 to 6 years, the hardware doesn't change and that's a problem. This is why it loses out to some of the mid-range phones. While medium intensity games such as Brawl Stars runs perfectly fine and you won't really have an issue with it. If better gaming performance is a very important feature to you, it's better off getting last year's mid-range phone like the Poco X3 Pro, which will perform in games a lot better than this. As you can see from here, if you play something that's very intense such as Genshin Impact or something with the same uh, intensity such as a flight simulator, this clearly struggles. It's very laggy and it's very jittery and it always experiences constant frame rate drops. For the same price, if you want to stick with iOS, I'll recommend the iPhone XR for about $20 more. It's a way better deal. Getting an iPhone XR is a lot better than just getting an iPhone X because it's one year later means you get one more year of extra software support, but you get a later chip which can perform slightly better in games, although at the same price you will not beat the Poco X3 Pro. But right now the iPhone XR is an amazing deal, it's way better than getting an iPhone X in 2022. There's just so many reasons, starting from it being announced one year later and all the benefits from that, having a more advanced chip and overall the iPhone XR is a lot better deal than this iPhone X and I would recommend everyone that's considering iPhone X to get an XR unless you just want an OLED screen. Speakers are pretty good but the microphone is barely usable. The battery health I'm at 83% with that it lasts me about three to four hours of screen on time with my normal usage, which is all right. With 100% battery health, I'm sure you can get about five plus hours of screen on time, which it's okay, but I wouldn't really say it's 2022 standard. I think with the XR, you can add one more hour of screen on time to bump it up to six hours of screen on time, which is pretty good even in 2022. However, day-to-day -day use on the iPhone X can be a struggle unless you're very conservative. That's based on my experience back in 2021 when my battery health was still around 86%. As much as I love the iPhone X, which is rather compact size, it's classy, back design with the camera, I can't really recommend this to anyone in 2022. If you're looking to buy the iPhone X, please try to get the iPhone XR or the Poco X3 Pro. These are the reasons why. 
The Poco X3 Pro have 120Hz display which is twice as smooth as the iPhone X or XRs. But the iPhone XR, while it loses in display, its build quality is similar and its performance is better. The software is even better, you will get one more year of update and you also have the A12 Bionic chip. The battery life on the XR and especially the Poco X3 Pro is significantly better than this iPhone X. And for current users, it is a good time to upgrade the iPhone X, although I don't recommend everyone doing it because the money can be better well spent in this hard time. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.